Well, a very good morning to you. Today is the first day of an epic new adventure for the present, Mrs. Camsell and I. And I thought I should probably record this whole process just to show you what an absolute clusterfuck the whole thing is. For reasons which I will go into in a later vlog, we've been caught up in uh, what is the UK's housing crisis and we are having to move from our home of Sussex, we've always lived in the southeast of England, uh, to other parts of the world um, where there is more housing available. So we've been renting our house here in Sussex for the last 20 years and the landlady has decided that she wants to cash in on the property prices going up, so we have been evicted. Uh, there's so few houses in the southeast of England that we are having to look further afield and so we looked at a whole bunch of places and we've decided on Morpeth which is in Northumberland. Now just to give you some idea of where that is, uh, this is where Sussex is and this is where Morpeth is. Uh, it's 300 odd miles away. It's a logistical nightmare. We're also moving into a house which is about half the size of the one we've got now. The garden is a fraction of the size and we don't want to move so we've got to sell a whole bunch of stuff that we don't want to actually get rid of. Um, it's all very upsetting but I thought I would document this process. It may be of interest, it may not be of interest to anyone um, but I think historically it's important to have a little record of what's going on at this time because it is a weird, weird time uh, for housing. We are a very typical middle class family. We, uh, you know, we're not wealthy but we're far from broke so we're in a lot better position than many, many people and we're able to do this and I fully, fully appreciate that. Um, but all we wanted to do was just move out of here and into another house and it's impossible. It's impossible to buy, the property prices are insane. I mean, absolutely insane in the southeast of England. Um, and renting is just an extension of that. You know, people buy a house, they rent it out, but they've got a massive mortgage to pay, so the rents are huge as well and they can get it. So yeah, we're, we're off ski. It's my feeling, and I could be way off the mark here, but I think we're gonna see a lot more of this happening soon because families in the Southeast, which is traditionally perceived as the sort of affluent area of the country, are being displaced and it creates two problems. One is obviously the displacement of those families. They're gonna to have to go elsewhere. But secondly, every town needs different people to make that town work. You know, it doesn't matter um, where it is in the country, you still need to buy groceries. There's probably a coffee shop, you need cleaners, you need stuff like that. And if you're earning very little money, then you can't afford to live in these areas. So how do we service those um, those jobs, those vocations within the area to make the entire community function. So I think this is gonna become a much bigger problem. Um, like I say, I'm right in the middle of it, so it's very difficult to be objective. This is our story, and today is the first part of that. We are going up to Morpeth to pick up the keys to our new house and we are flying up. We're very fortunate, I've got a lot of airline miles because I do a lot of work in Europe. So even though it's a bank holiday, um, happy jubilee, your majesty. Uh, the yeah, Even though it's a bank holiday, we were able to get free flights up to Newcastle so we can go up, pick up the keys, do a little bit of a recce and then the real work starts next week. The present Mrs. Camsel and I are probably gonna be quite bitter and twisted by the time we get to the end of this process, but hey, Come on the journey with us. It'll make us feel better if nothing else. Well, this is me um, in the new house in Morpeth. And frankly, the entire weekend has been a bit of a fiasco. So I did the vlog in the house in Grobra and we got in the car with all our stuff and I started the engine and it sounded like a tank and basically a piece of the exhaust near the front had fallen off. So. That is not a great start. I've got to get that fixed uh, before next week. Um, the yeah, Luckily, we uh, Claire has a car as well, so it wasn't the end of the world. So we had to jump in her car, move everything across, get to the station. That was all good. Um, when we got to London, 
We went on the new Elizabeth line. So we went up from uh, Eridge to London Bridge, London Bridge to Farringdon, and then we got on the Elizabeth line so we could go out to Heathrow. This is supposed to be the new fantastic way to travel. Is it bollocks? So the Elizabeth line, which everyone knows is really late and over budget, um, is also not quite joined up yet. So you have to get off at Paddington and then get on another train at Paddington, which takes you out to Heathrow. So that is, uh, that is one of those things. But the Elizabeth line arrives on one side of Paddington station and you then have to make your way across Paddington station on a busy bank holiday, Jubilee weekend, uh, to get to the other platform. So we missed that train out to Heathrow. Left plenty of time for it, but man, what a fiasco. And what a ridiculous scenario as well for our flagship new line. Um, anyway, we got down to Heathrow. Um, the flight was okay. Then the bags were delayed. So the bags were delayed. Then the Metro, the Newcastle Metro, broke down so uh, I had to get an uber and honestly I have to say that was a really good experience um, but yeah the, the uber was firstly not expensive and the guy was really nice really helpful so we took us down to Newcastle station and we got to Morpeth and here we are and because of all the fiasco um, this was the first time I had a chance to turn the camera on and we're just about to leave. Uh, the new house is much, much smaller than the old one. Uh, we love the town, but it's such a shame we've got to get rid of so much of our stuff. Um, and, and it's really been quite an upsetting experience all around, to be perfectly honest. Um, the people here, the landlady's been lovely and the, the people who've been sorting us out, they've all been great. But, you know, when you don't want to do it, <laughs> It doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> Don't want to be here, I want to stay in Grobra, but hey ho. Um, there has been one other good piece of news as well. Where we are in Morpeth, we do not get fast broadband, and that is absolutely crucial for me working effectively. Uh, you can get reasonable 4G connections on uh, Vodafone, and uh, Claire is on O2, but um, the fixed line to the house still uses uh, back to the exchange technology. There's no fiber to cabinet here. Uh, or if there is, the cabinet must be chuffing miles away because the best speed I was likely to get was 10 megabits per second. That is, in by modern standards, just absurd. So yeah, that was going to be completely unusable. However, this area is now covered by EE5G and I got a swanky new EE router um, based on their map, them saying that there was a good signal here. So this is a bit of a risk, uh, but as luck would have it, I plugged the EE router in, switched it on and boom, uh, I'm getting speeds of, usually it's about 150 megabits per second down and 50 up, uh, but I've topped out at uh, just over 220 megabits per second down and 80 megabits per second up, which is ridiculously fast considering there's no wires. And of course, the best thing is uh, that if you are a tenant, as we are, um, you don't have to sign up. You still have to sign up for an 18 month contract, but if we don't stay here for 18 months, that thing is coming with me. So uh, yeah, really pleased about that. That is uh, very good news and it means we'll be able to work. It's also quite exciting because I'm a bit of a nerd and just being able to plug a router in and for you to have, you know, 100, 150 megabit speeds over the air, um, is, well, sure as hell making me feel old, um, but it's, it's uh, really pleasing. Now we are done here with picking up the keys and stuff. We have to go back to Crowborough, but we are not flying back. We are going on the Lumo train service. Now, the Lumo service is a new low cost train service, which runs from Edinburgh down to London King's Cross. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that we chose to live in Morpeth because it goes from Edinburgh to Morpeth, Newcastle, Stevenage, and then London. So there's not many stops along the way. Uh, it's all fitted out standard class. It's like the easy jet of trains and it's relatively cheap. It, you know, like any train tickets, the earlier you buy them, the better the deals you get. But I have seen tickets as low as 10 pounds one way from Morpeth to London. Can't even get from Irridge to London for 10 pounds on any ticket. So uh, it really is uh, very low cost. So we're going on that, but because it's low cost, it's packed. They don't let you bring big suitcases on. I think 
that this is actually a shortcoming of Lumo. I think that you know if you're following the budget airline model, then people should be able to bring suitcases, but you charge for them. That seems fair to me, um, but you actually can't at all. So um, we luckily haven't got any baggage, but that is a bit of a limitation with, with Lumo. Uh, you don't get using the other services, LNER, London Northeastern Railway. So anyway, um, we're going to see how that goes. But yeah, we're getting on a train at Morpeth and then uh, London is just three stops away. So it's a three hour trip on these Lumo trains. So that's us for the moment. The next adventure is going to be seeing what's wrong with my exhaust. I did not expect to be crawling around under my car on a bank holiday Saturday. I thought I'd be selling my stuff online, but hey ho, such is life. Um, and yeah, then after that, assuming I can get it fixed, bringing the car up next week. Um, getting the train back again, bringing some more stuff up the week after, getting the train back again, bringing some more stuff up the week after, you get the picture. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening to my whinging, and like I say, please don't feel obliged to stay subscribed to the channel if you came for the travel vlogs and now you've got some serious whinging um, about my living situation. Um, I apologise. <laughs> If you feel you've been misled, but I make no apologies for the way I live my life. Uh, catch you soon. Take it easy.